doing my cookie bake sale. So, new site where she wants to sleep and she decides to sleep here. Just having my lunch. So, it's a sandwich with some egg. Scrambled egg and a glass of milk. Uh, just turning on the camera to say that yesterday we went, I did a animal communication session with Mochi through one of the animal communicators and it was a very interesting session. So I wanted to record the video, I mean the whole call, but then uh, I did and I forgot to turn on the audio recording so it was basically a muted video which basically renders the whole clip um, not usable. So now I basically have to go by memory on what went on during the session. Mochi didn't come to the camera at all but what she did was pretty interesting because she just went to the pet kit bed and slept and she slept so soundly that she was snoring which is very rare because normally during the daytime she doesn't sleep or nap much and even if she does it doesn't reach the point of deep sleep and it doesn't she doesn't snore in the like daytime so that was pretty rare that's interesting and um the session started off quite cool so like you start the call and then she said that oh, um, there'll be a silence there'll be silence for a while i think that's when she's connecting to the dog probably talking to the dog first you can see her like muttering to herself as well but i think it was muted then uh when she started talking again uh, the first thing she said was you guys like to play with toys right she said and you sometimes will hide the toys then Mochi doesn't like it like she she says you hide for too long I want my toy back so I actually haven't done this in a while but what I was doing was um, you know like she likes to play with this five stone piece so when she first found it she was so obsessed with it like she wouldn't let go and she just kept playing with it like until she turned upside down and we go everywhere but so what I did was I would tempt her with it then I would hide it in my hand and then I'll try to get her to press the play button and then let her have it so when she doesn't press it takes a while because she just keeps staring at my hand because <laughs> I want to I will do this and then I'll, I will point to the button then she would she was supposed to go and press it but sometimes she doesn't so she just keeps staring at my hand so I actually forgot about that and that is pretty much the only toy that I can actually hold in my hand like completely hidden so the rest are like towels and like soft toys so those I can't hold in my hand so that's interesting and um, that's the first thing she said the next thing was that her right ear is it feels a little bit congested like there's some stuff stuck inside so that's interesting because um, that, that ear is a clean ear she has some issues with her left ear where there's a lot of black things coming out so I've been cleaning it daily yeah, so and I've kind of been neglecting the other year because it's rather clean so I thought no need to do it so often. I was like, okay. Then there's a list of questions that I asked like, oh, how is she feeling? Stuff like that. And um, apparently like she complained a little bit to the communicator that sometimes she wants her way and then we don't give it to her. <laughs> the communicator was saying that she, this girl is not does not have a very good temper so she, she just said like pity why uh pity puts her how we can see that in her so that's quite interesting because i have at that point i haven't i hadn't told her anything yet besides like maybe her left ear was itchy so it's quite funny because sometimes she when she, when the doorbell rings she will bark like keeps barking at the door to inform us then um we don't want her to bark so much because it's it's a bit loud then so we tell her to go to bed and sometimes she'll go to bed very begrudgingly and she'll like Ruff! like angrily rough one time and then walk to bed and then like kick kick her hind legs a bit so it's, uh, you can see that like she's like not happy about it but i'll do it anyway yeah so it's quite funny then um she's a very smart dog she's comfortable in our place uh she doesn't feel any stress just maybe and then she brought up some stuff like uh, her right hind kneecap feels a little weird it's not painful or anything yet but it's a little weird it could be due to because she's like jumping and running around a lot as a puppy so it's like maybe a little bit strained uh, just something to note not a problem 
uh, and maybe her right eye is a little dry like the inner corner like here is a little dry so she said maybe you can get some like imo saline just drip once in a while the human one works yeah and she's basically a very smart dog but she has the tendency she has the potential to become a very um obnoxious dog because of her temperament which is basically not getting what she wants and she will throw a tantrum um, but for right now, for her temperament, she is considered very obedient already because we've been training her quite a bit and telling her like no means no. And I also asked like, does she know who we are? Like me and Nick. So because what I noticed is that she sticks to me a lot but not so much to Nick. So I, want, I was wondering like what is Nick, like who is Nick exactly to her? So she actually knows that like so called we are her parents and that I'm the stricter one and Nick is the one she can sort of bully. So sometimes when I scolding her, then she said sometimes the papa will come in and help like tell her okay enough enough, like tell me enough. But actually that never really happened. But to her it might seem like the case because what he when she goes to him, what he tells her is sorry I cannot help you, but in a very gentle tone. So maybe to her she thinks is, uh, trying to console her or something. She and she didn't really say who she prefers more in the session. But what I notice is she sticks to me more. I'm like the highest priority. So if Nick is playing her and I walk past, she will look at me. Like she will look at me walk and then go back to Nick. So yeah, that's interesting. And then she said she wants to go out more often. Uh, she says like, I'm a good girl. I want to go out more. Then the animal communicator was like, oh, you say you're a good girl? Okay, let me ask mommy. Like, uh, it's quite funny. Then uh, she recently has been charging at like other do- or trying to charge at other dogs like she wants to play with them but not all dogs want to play with a puppy because they are very high energy right then so sometimes I hold her back also for her own good because some of the dogs I know they are not very uh friendly then she starts barking at them at a very high pitch and I told the communicator about it then she was asking um Mochi why like why does she charge at other dogs or like Say, oh no, she, she said you can't keep charging at other dogs or keep wanting to play with other dogs because not all dogs want to play with you then apparently Mochi said like why not and like stomp her feet so that's quite funny so she had to tell her like mm, you have to give some dogs their space because not all dogs want to play with you then Mochi apparently gave her the side eye like mm, okay that kind of thing. Then it's like, if mommy restrain you, you cannot bark at the other dogs. Then she didn't say anything about that. It's quite funny. And apparently she's a dog that doesn't like to lose, so I think she has a bit of an ego problem. And she thinks very highly of herself, like even though she's like puny. So, uh, she will go after big dogs, any kind of dogs, and she thinks she will win. But if, she, in the case they overpower her, she doesn't want to play with them, because she doesn't like to lose. Uh, which happened to one of the corgis that we met out there because he's a little bit rough because he's still young he doesn't really know how to control his uh, strength and she actually runs away from him a lot some other questions was like oh when she lies down for belly rubs so we give her some and then after that she starts like trying to bite our fingers uh, then we were asking the communicator like why she said uh, it's her thing so she gets bored very easily so once she wants the belly rub and then after a few seconds she's bored so she starts she starts playing with your hand as a toy then uh, so the communicator told her like oh you can't do that then she was like why not that's how we play then, she, then the communicator was like no that's not how you play because like that's how they play with other dogs so they think we uh, we play like that but it's not so yeah um, so what's interesting is right after the session when Nick gave her a belly rub she actually really didn't bite or try to bite like you can see the restraint so this morning she tried that also and she hold she held back like the trying to bite for very very long until the end uh then when she started like trying to nip then i just took my hand away and she's like oh okay like you can see that she's like okay no more yeah it's quite funny uh it's a very interesting session i also asked like because she's from taiwan right and we don't have any uh idea of what went on there so I just asked like does she have any memory of what happened before she came here then what the communicator said was she's seeing a picture of her playing with two to three other white same size dogs in an open area so it's 
it's not a cage and it's not like yeah, it's not a very small confined area. It's just a open area. It could be a room. It could be a playpen that's bigger than what she has now. But that's what she got. So I don't know what to think about it because we can't confirm or deny that. Um, but seems possible because she did come here with her brother. Yeah. So at least that's good to know that she's not like like kept in a very not good condition. So I was asking like why she doesn't like to pee and poop on grass or what is her feelings about grass. Because what I noticed is that she would walk on the grass, sniff, ev- sniff everything, but once she steps out onto the cement, she will poop there, or she will pee there. So I like, that's interesting, because most dogs like to pee on grass because of the different texture, right? So what she said was that she does not like the feeling of wet grass on her paws, and a uh, dry one is okay, so she don't like the squishy, muddy feeling, so it makes her paws dirty, so she doesn't like it. So why she poops outside because she has to squat and when she um, poops she circles a lot so she doesn't like the feeling of that so she just rather not do it there and um, regarding peeing and pooping inside the house and outside the house she rather do it outside but the thing is she's holding her pee for too long so after her walk at night she comes back she pees uh, so now it has become like she pees once outside a small pee and then come back pee again um, and then that's all until the next day for the next walk which is around 2pm so that's a bit too long so it's like 11 to 2 11pm to 2pm more than 12 hours and like it's not good so the communicator asked like do you know where to pee at home and she's like yes I know then she the communicator told her like if you need to pee just go and pee don't, don't hold it for so long um, but she hasn't done that today and we also let her sleep outside of the plate, like as in we opened the gate of her playpen last night to let her sleep wherever she wants to, to see if she will anyhow pee. She didn't, but she she alternates between under the dining table, the pet kit and her crate, or her pee, play, uh, her pee pad. So that's quite okay. And yeah, that's just interesting. So, but one thing we realized is she knows where to pee but not sure about the pooping because sometimes if you let her out, she poops everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, it's an, inter- it's an interesting session. Um, Nick does not believe in this animal communication thing. I'm more likely to believe because I didn't tell her anything about Mochi before she asked me like the questions about the toys and all those. So, uh, what I gave her was basically a picture of Mochi the day before the session. A recent picture, so I took it on, like, on the spot. <coughs> her name and her gender, that's all. So she doesn't even know Moji is how old and what her personality is like. So like the picture that I showed her was this one. Which is very neutral, I would say, like the expression and everything. Like it's just a picture of a cute dog. And she could tell me like she's a Da Xiao Chie PT and then like stuff like that. So I think that was like interesting. Uh, if I had given her this other picture, I guess you could tell from the photo, but yeah, so that's, that's interesting. I wouldn't mind going for another session, like maybe next year or something to see what has changed, but her rates will have gone up by then, so let's see how it goes. But yeah, it's good to know that she's at least comfortable and not stressed out here, because she keeps licking her legs and paws, which is could be a sign of stress leaking or boredom or there's something there. So. Uh, what the animal communicator said is that she's not stressed at all. She's very comfortable here, and um, she there's no real itch. Like maybe once in a while, there's itching, but like it's not like there's something there and it's not painful. So I guess her licking is due to boredom, but because she's still a puppy and puppies get bored very easily. So yeah, so time to finish my meal. Bye. When I think Mochi decide where she wants to sleep, and she decides to sleep here while we are using the computer. So if she wants to go into the master bedroom with us later, I guess we can let her in. But I'm just afraid that it's a little bit too cold for her because the aircon is on. But she was sleeping on the rug earlier, and she seems fine. Yeah, brought her little mat from the playpen in, and. Uh, put it in the least cold corner and she still went back to the rock to sleep. So Hello. I just bought a new phone. 
I got it on, I ordered it on around 1am 28th of October and it arrived today which is pretty fast then so the phone I have right now is the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren I think previously we mentioned before so this is the last collaboration that OnePlus has with McLaren and it's almost two years and it's starting to lag so for me I don't really like certain aspects of the phone the cool thing is that the screen is literally full screen there's no cutout camera but the issue is the camera is a pop-up cam so I don't like it because um, so I don't really take selfies but if say I want to take to, to use the front camera to like maybe check my face or something when I'm out I can't because this is really freaking obvious and so like you know telegram has this uh, function where you can just press the little camera icon here and it will raise up the front camera for you to take a quick video message it also because like it takes some time for the camera to adjust to the light the first second or so there's a white flash and then it it has like the then it, it goes back to normal and it takes a while because it has to wait for the camera to come up as well yeah so but the nice thing is that you get a full screen without the cutout hole somewhere which is quite nice yeah and personally i don't like curved screens so i don't know if you can see but it's it's curved here so i can't put screen protectors especially the glass ones on it because it will just cover like up the straight parts then yeah other than that it's a really good phone i normally when my phone starts to lag i get the feeling that i want to change it so this one has been okay up to now which is almost two years which is good in my track record because normally i change phone like about once a year yeah then uh i was actually quite interested in the galaxy flip because of the flip function so i took the trial to try it out um uh, what I like about the phone is that the fingerprint sensor is actually on the power button so it makes it very easy to unlock so it's all you need to do is just hold it here and then it unlocks whereas for this one the it's the in-screen camera the in-screen fingerprint sensor and I can't even use face unlock for this because of the camera yeah then for the galaxy flip I like that it's pretty cool that you can fold it in half and the their default apps still work um, like the camera and you can do the flex where you fold it in half you can use the base as a tripod and then uh, the top half can be the cam the viewfinder so that's pretty cool I like the front part of the screen where you can actually use it as a camera as well and also um, put wallpapers that you like there and it's a good way to see notifications I guess but this one has the always on display um, but theirs is not always on so theirs is a lift up display then it so but then when you get like messages it, it the screen lights up and then it shows you the messages here uh, example of a notification pop up something like that so to me that's not that big of a pull factor um, mainly the pull factor for that the flip was the design but it's not as easy to open as I hoped it would be it actually si requires significant force to like lift it up so it's only easy to use if you are using both hands to open the phone if you try to use your your finger like this to open the phone it's actually quite difficult and yeah that's about it so personally I never liked uh, Samsung phones I've given them a few tries once with the Note 3 and then another time with the S8 uh, the Note 3 started lagging around 6 months in and I couldn't stand it anymore I just sold it away um, the S8, I really liked it because of the design at that point of time and that's why I tried to try, give it another try. The other thing about the S8 I didn't like was around one year in, it was super laggy to the point that I couldn't even stand using it anymore. I just swapped out and go, went back to OnePlus. Yeah, so I've been a OnePlus fan since the first one. So I actually have the OnePlus One still the 16 gig version which is puny now you can't do anything on it so i use it to uh, monitor mochi on the camera 
Then I got the OnePlus 2 as well, but I sold that away. I went back to OnePlus 6. Yeah. So they skipped 4 because of the Chinese belief that 4 is a, is an unlucky number. So they went OnePlus 3, 5, 6. So I got the 6 in the white version, which is actually very pretty. And I'm pretty sure I have it somewhere, I just can't find it. Uh, then this is 7T Pro. I believe Nick got the 6T before that, and then now he has the 9. So we are pretty much OnePlus fans, and this is also the OnePlus. But this time around, I didn't get a flagship version because uh, the one Nick got is the flagship, but you can no longer get it at that price that he got, which was $8.99, I think, because he stacked it with some vouchers. Uh, and I'm kind of moving away from the flagship. I don't need the highest end specs for my phone nowadays because what I'm using it for is mainly camera and texting yeah, and just social media. So I don't need the full specs for gaming and everything, but this is the OnePlus uh, 9R 5G gaming phone. So uh, it was pretty cheap, I got it on, they had a flash sale and it was I think $799 or $779 and then I got uh, extra $20 off in a voucher, so $759 in total. It comes with screen protector and um, the, the, what's that? Oh, yeah, PCS. Yes. Yep, that's this. Um, wireless Bluetooth earphones, but it's not OnePlus brand, a random brand. And the glass screen protector. So, okay, this is interesting because this is from the official authorized OnePlus um, Shopee store. So, it's quite interesting that they gave like non OnePlus side products. <laughs> um, okay, so this is much better package than what I had in my previous one. So, I don't know where my box is. If I knew where it was, I could show you because the box itself actually was dented even though they did protection on the on the wrapper. So I'm not sure what went wrong there. Okay, so this is from the OnePlus authorized uh, service center. There's a card here. But yeah, this is the phone. So classic OnePlus red and it says 9R 5G and I just thought it was interesting that it's this. So it says only for sale and warranty in mainland China. Okay so this is not, uh, this is OnePlus Okay, so I take that back about this having good um, protection because here and here you can see that like, the corners are squished here as well. This was like dented in. So I guess the bubble wrap doesn't really help. Okay, so the phone. Oh yes, one more thing. Uh, I didn't like about the Z Flip 3 is that I find this phone already pretty heavy and the other one is about the same weight. Yeah, so this is about 209, I think, grams, 209 grams. So this one is lighter, it's like about 190 something. So you can feel the difference, but it's still weighty. Yeah, then uh, I like that they tell you where the NFC area is because I had to figure out where I had to go and google where it was in the OnePlus 6 so apparently it was somewhere behind the camera here previously yeah OnePlus still sticks on their default screen protector for you not sure if you can see it, it's here 
Uh, one thing I don't like about the screen protector is that it attracts a lot of dust. It's like staticky, so it like it just makes all the dust stick down. It's not the, it's a little bit sticky as well. So yeah. Then it's a matte matte black finish on the back, and four cameras. I forgot the specs honestly. Uh, I don't really care so much about the specs anymore on the cameras. As long as it works and it's fast, it's fine for me. This is 48 megapixel OIS, 14 to 28 mm focal, I think. Okay, let's check the rest of this. Yeah, this is the China China charger. Warp charge 65, so I'm not sure if I want to use it because it's uh, China hit. And Nick already has a lot of charge. I think it's 65, not sure. Um, yeah. So nothing else left in the box. The rest of it is here. Free case, as always, with OnePlus. With the Never Settle. This case looks pretty okay at first. It turns yellow pretty quick, but that's fine, it's free. Um, the rest of the things, so... Chinese stuff. The ejector pin, and then this is a, the, probably the letter from the CEO. Yep. Everything is in Chinese. Not, that's not surprising. One thing I like about the OnePlus cases is that they actually protect the phone really well. So they actually put the corner bumpers, like you can see here, it's raised. So that when you put your phone down this way, it's well protected, the screen doesn't touch the table. Yeah, so all their, their, uh, the free cases that come with the phone, they all have this uh, feature, which I actually really like, and I like that it's a clear back. So you can uh, showcase your phone's back, which is, uh, okay for this one it's just black, but some of the other phones have pretty nice colours at the back. Whereas for, for some reason, the McLaren version has the like the best looking back I've seen, with the, this holographic design and then the, yellow, the orange on the sides. But they decided to give a back that is also designed with McLaren, but it totally covers the whole back. So I don't see the point <laughs> of designing such a pretty back to have it covered. Well, this is loading. Uh, one thing I like about OnePlus versus Samsung is the OS itself. So OnePlus did a very stripped down version of the OS called Oxygen OS. And then... Um, it's it's very stock Android, which I like. Whereas Samsung reskinned everything and tried to make it their own, which added a lot of additional things like uh, S Health, S Note, S Cal, etc. Where you could just use the Google one, and then you have to create a Samsung account, which gets you nice things like themes and fonts and stuff like that. But they're not most of them are not free and you have to kind of tie all your S, S things to the Samsung account while you still maintain your own Google account because you're using Android, right? I don't see the point having both, so that's why I like uh, like simpler OS's. Yeah, I don't really like the China OS, like the Mi UI and all those because they look too much like iPhone and it just feels like a copy. But yeah, so one thing that Oxygen OS has, which is this thing called the shelf here. Uh, you can actually add your, all your widgets at the bottom and it becomes like a non-stop scrolling shelf of things. So you can put like your news, your email, stuff like that. So I used to have a lot more but they somehow resetted mine. So it became like this and yeah. But that's one thing that I really like about it. So I'm gonna set up the phone. I was just looking at the listing again from Shopee and it's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 870. So my old one is about Snapdragon 8555 plus I think if I'm not wrong. So that's pretty much still an upgrade. 
and it did say that it's coming with free gift, free NetEase 9, N9 wireless ear earphones and a plus 9H tempered glass and also includes US 2 pin warp charger and free 2 pin to 3 pin converter which I went to dig in the package and found it so at least I can still use it and this one is um, SG one year local warranty from the authorized uh, service center doing my cookie bake sale so new size containers sea salt 150 grams refill packs uh, this is all grey and then try a new flavour which is cranberry in dark chocolate which is actually really nice I like this we'll probably do this for Christmas again because it's a Christmassy flavour and something my brother told me about this table is that there is a crack here so we didn't see, we didn't see this when we first got the table and set it up so I'm not sure what happened uh, maybe from all the lifting and stuff like that the crack formed so yeah this is a solid wood table you can actually see it from below as well it goes all the way in up to like here somewhere here yeah so I mean it's still functional but we'll probably just replace it when when it, it dies or something yeah the chairs are still pretty good quality though yeah so this one is solid wood from Taobao um, possibly the only one of this or the what the only furniture so far that has issues um, the coffee table and the TV console is fine and it's from the same seller so maybe something happened during shipping I don't know but yeah this is a very heavy piece of wood so we're just gonna use it until it's done but yeah, we will do a furniture review of everything in the house and where they're from and stuff like that. So we are planning a video like that. So look out for that.